Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn how to use relate to and related to. And no, related to is not just the past simple of relate to. They actually have two totally different meanings and they're both very common. You should definitely have them in your vocabulary, your advanced vocabulary. So that's exactly what you'll do today. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforceenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this lesson. So let's talk about how to use relate to and related to. So first, let's talk about how to use to relate to something. When you relate to something, it means you understand a situation or you understand someone's feelings. And the reason why you understand that situation or someone's feelings is because you've had a similar experience. You've experienced it yourself. And because of that, you understand the situation or how someone feels. So let's say your coworker comes up to you and says, oh, this project is really stressing me out. Now imagine that in the past, you were on that exact same project and you experienced stress when you were on that project. You've had the same experience. Because of that, you can just say, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. And what is the that? Well, the that is feeling stressed out on the project. You've experienced the exact same feelings that your coworker is experiencing now. And because you can relate to that, you can probably have a different conversation. You can have a more in-depth conversation, or maybe you can share some tips and advice because you've had that same experience. Here's a great example I saw on Youglish. We can all relate to having doubt or feeling insecure about certain things, right? And you agree with that, right? You can relate to having doubt. You can relate to feeling insecure. If I ask you, can you relate to that? I'm asking you, have you ever experienced that in your life? And if you've never experienced doubt and you've never experienced insecurity, well then you're not human, right? Because we've all experienced it, right? Of course we have, it's a human emotion. We experience all emotions, negative and positive. Now, why might you say something like this? Well, likely because you want to connect to whoever you're talking to. If a student is coming to me and telling me how insecure they feel about using their English in public, I can let them know that I can relate to that. And if the student feels like, oh, Jennifer has experienced this as well, then they might be more open to hearing the advice I have to share or they might just feel closer to me, more connected to me because we've had that same experience. So that's how we feel connected to each other is through shared experiences, right? So it's really powerful to try to relate to somebody's experience or to let them know that you can relate to what they're feeling or what they're experiencing right now. Now, notice in our Youglish example, what do you notice about the verb? We have relate to, and then what do you notice? Relate to, relate to having. And notice it's also relate to feeling. Both of our verbs are in the gerund. This is a gerund expression. When you want to use a verb next, I can relate to feeling, having, wanting, missing, needing, whatever verb you have next is going to be in the gerund. So make sure you pay attention to that when you're forming your sentences. 
Now let's talk about to be related to someone. When you're related to someone, it means that they are a family member. <laughs> They're part of your family. You share the same blood, genes, DNA. You come from the same family. Even if it's a great, 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 great aunt or uncle, even if it's a very distant family member, you're still related to them. To be related to someone. So let's say your friend invites you to their family reunion. And at a family reunion, everybody is going to be related, right? Well, not everybody, because of course, other people could bring friends or people they're just dating, for example, they're not related to them. That's a very important point. You're not related to your spouse, the person you're married to, because that would mean you share the same DNA and genes and blood, and that's just a little creepy, right? No, you're not related to your spouse. You're married to them, you're part of their family, but you're not relatives, you're not blood relatives, right? You're related to your mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, and cousins, and then the second, the third, the extended family as well, down the family tree. But you're not related to the person you're married to. So you're at this family reunion with your friend, and as you're meeting new people, of course you're gonna ask your friend, oh, how are you related to that person? How are you related to Frank? Oh, he's my second cousin. How are you related to Mary? Oh, she's my aunt. How are you related to Jim? Oh, actually I'm not related to him, he's married to my aunt. Because you're not related to your aunt's husband, right? Because you're not in the same blood line, the same DNA, the same genes as your aunt's husband. Yes, the husband is part of your family, but you're not directly related to them. Okay, so there is a difference between someone in your family and then being related to someone. So as you can see, there's a big difference between when you relate to something or you relate to someone's feelings and you are related to someone. So there's that difference in sentence structure because it's to be related with the ED, to be related to, but then there's a huge difference in the meaning as well. When you can relate to someone's feelings, you understand their feelings because you've experienced the same thing. And when you're related to someone, they, you share the same DNA, the same blood, the same genes. They're a member of your blood family. So now you know how to use relate to someone's feelings and to be related to someone. So it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave two examples in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Awesome job with this lesson. I can't wait to read your examples and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.